I am live. How beautiful you are, O Virgin of Christ, who are worthy to receive the Lord's crown, the crown of perpetual virginity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Josephine Baquita, a virgin, and also a patroness for the African-American Catholic community that gathers here at St. Joseph on the Rio Grande. So we ask her intercession to help us, especially at this time of our country, to seek reconciliation and healing because of the racial divisions and animosity that has existed in this country for so long. We ask forgiveness for our sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Josephine Baquita from abject slavery to the dignity of being your daughter and a bride of Christ, Grant, we pray, that by her example, we may show constant love for the Lord Jesus crucified, remaining steadfast in charity and prompt to show compassion through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw, saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Th thus evening came and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed. The third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, 
and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be glad in his works. May the Lord be glad in his works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. May the Lord be glad in his works. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the waters stood. May the Lord be glad in his works. You sent forth springs into the watercourses that wind among the mountains. Beside them, the birds of the heaven dwell. From among the branches, they send forth their song. May the Lord be glad in his works. How manifold all your works, O Lord. In wisdom, you have brought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. May the Lord be glad in his works. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. We heard in the first reading today the beginning of the book of Genesis, the beginning of all scripture, in the beginning when God created. And one of the things that is mentioned repeatedly by the author of the book of Genesis is God saw all that he had made and it was good. That is the funda one of the fundamental uh, truths that is presented there by the author of Genesis, by the word of God that it is God who creates and what God creates is good. And we need to remember that, especially on this feast of St. Joseph in Bakita, that all, and we'll hear the second part, uh, it's sort of like Paul Harvey, page two, you'll get the rest of the story tomorrow, if you come, if you listen in tomorrow the rest of the story of creation, where God created man and woman in his likeness, in his own image and likeness. He created them, male and female, he made them. And God saw 
after the creation of, of man and woman, that it was very good. Not just good, very good. That is what we need to remember, <laughs> is that all people are created in the image and likeness of God and are created not just good, like the stars and the fish and the birds and the trees and the plants, but very good. And that's what needs to be honored, respected, and held up with great dignity that it's the image and likeness of God that we bear, each one of us, regardless of race or ethnicity or cultural background. Each person created in the image and likeness of God. Now, the gospel has, uh, has uh, this, this interesting uh, part where uh, they want to touch at least his cloak, the tassel on his cloak. And in New Mexico, one of the things that is done in many places is moradas of the penitentes or also in many of the uh, our Indian tribes uh, in their chapels and shrines. The images of the saints that they have are clothed. So people like to make like to make the, the clothes for them and dress them in, in the images. Uh, one of the things it does is it protects the image. And the second thing is that people want to touch the cloak. Not so much the image, but that, that if they at least touch, touch the garment that has been made, that's asking for a blessing, it's, ask, it's asking for a favor, the intercession. So, for instance, La Conquistadora in, in, in Santa Fe, she's got a wardrobe that, that probably this church isn't big enough to hold because everybody wants to make, an, make a dress or something special for uh, Nuestra Senora de la Paz, as she's known now. In Thanksgiving, or for favors received, or uh, petitioning for some grace, some favor. Like I said, she has a wardrobe. Again, it's protected the image from people touching, but as long as you touch the garment or the tassel, then you know that your favor has been heard, or your request has been received. See, at baptism, we were clothed. There's a special garment that is, well, the white garment that is placed on, but most babies, when they're presented for baptism, they're dressed in white from head to toe. And then they also receive the baptismal garment that is placed on them to remind us uh, outwardly by the visible sign of our honor and our dignity that we have received in baptism, this grace and favor that God has bestowed on us, bringing us from the dead and giving us new life, forgiving our sins, and clothing us in his image and likeness. And see, this is what we're, that's what we're supposed to touch in our relationship with, each, with one another. Again, regardless of the color of the skin, the ethnicity, the cultural background, that's what we touch. We touch the image and likeness of God that is within each person. And if the touch is made with that, that fervent the desire for unity to be united with this person, then we can have peace. There can be a hope of reconciliation. In our prayers today, as we ask St. Josephine Baquita, who as a child was captured by slave traders and sold 
I don't know how many times and was finally uh, bought by a, a, an Italian who was a consul to that country and taken to Italy. And there she was placed in, in a convent for, for education and they received her and she was received into the, into the Daughters of Kenosha. We have them here in, in Albuquerque to take care of Casa Angelica and the children who have special needs. But Bequita was known for her sweetness, for her, her kindness, her gentleness. A lot of her early experience could have made her very bitter, uh, very angry, uh, very hard of heart and spirit. And yet she's known for gentleness, sweetness, and, and love. Because when she received baptism in that convent and, and then was treated with dignity and respect and honor, it just made that image and likeness of God flower within her. How we treat one another can either bring out the best or it can bring out the worst. May Josephine Bakita's example of sweetness and docility help us to bring out the best in all people. Let us pray. We pray for the church and for her mission of touching all peoples with the gospel message that they may know their honor and dignity as beloved children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the actions and the decisions of our government leaders may also bring forth the very best in the populace whether in our country or in all nations, so that in our relations with one another, we treat each other justly and charitably. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our state legislators in Santa Fe, that God may grant them the energy and all the, the blessings that they need to do the work uh, during this very difficult time of pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue praying for all who have been affected by the coronavirus, especially those who are patients and hospitalized, for the doctors and nurses and hospital staffs who are treating them, for the families of the patients who are anxious for their health, and for also the family members of the caregivers who are concerned for the safety and health of their own loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the development and distribution of the vaccine against the coronavirus, that it may proceed efficiently and effectively to help stop the spread of this dreaded disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may do our part to bring about healing in the relations that different peoples have who are different because of race or culture or ethnicity, that we may help to overcome the racism or bigotry that has existed in our country for too long. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the deceased, Elena Suazo and Ofelia Romero, and for all who will die today, that St. Joseph, the patron of the holy death, may help them to die peacefully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers of your church gathered here, and hear the prayers of St. Josephine Baquita for all your people that we might follow her example of love and faith in our actions with one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin blessed Josephine Bakita, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us bow and offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Josephine Bakita, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.